All right. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I just want to remind everyone that there, that this is a special meeting uh, scheduled oh, months and months ago. I know before the school year started, we looked at dates for work sessions because, um, well, frankly, we have our regular school board meeting on the second Tuesday of every month, and uh, we have lots of work to do, and so we save our action items for the regular meetings and then attack. The special meetings use those to attack some problems and go into more in depth. And uh, so with that, um, we typically, in, in these work sessions, um, because there are no formal action items, um, we other than we're going to now entertain a motion to suspend Robert's Rules of Order. Mr. President, I move to suspend Robert's Rules of Order. Second. Motion by Lynn, second by Sandy. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? All right. Robert's rules of order are suspended, but we still do have an agenda that we need to follow with. Uh, first up is the superintendent search process. And um, we have obviously um, a job ahead of us to uh, find the next superintendent and to help us because I don't think there's anybody left on the board that was here for our last superintendent search. But um, there's been, you know, typically you use a consultant to help uh, find superintendents. And there are many uh, organizations that are willing to help. In fact, I think we just got two more um, proposals or marketing uh, proposals. Um, Andrea, why don't you um, give us, I think this is your topic to help us with the, the time frame and so forth. Yes, I believe at this point. And Tim as well, oh. I think, maybe, or not. Mostly. All right. Yeah. Good. Andrea? And just so um, you, you know, primarily I sent out several invitations to different agencies to r see if they were interested in submitting a proposal to be considered to, um, for the superintendent search. And we received three formal proposals and then, as Jamie indicated, um, that we received two additional letters of interest today from different companies. I know you were provided with the three initial proposals um, as part of the board materials. And I'm certainly here to answer any questions about the specifics, but I think you're primarily focusing on the selection process um, and not the specific applicants at this point. Right, yeah, our goal, because again, this is not a where we take formal action, but we would hope to set up the process. And so all of you, I hope, had a chance to look at those proposals. Um, some of them are extremely detailed. Um, looks like there's plenty of opportunity um, even for public participation in that process, but we need to get start with um, a consultant because they're going to help us with that time frame. I think that there was some general guidelines there of approximations for how much time different things can take, but ideally because we do have a little bit of a head start, um, we can hopefully get the best candidates. And anyone want to start off the discussion with, I guess the proposal that I would suggest, and again, I want to throw out there for discussion, would be that perhaps uh, the personnel committee uh, would be able to be a good process for selecting this uh, consultant and giving us uh, you know, recommendation that then the board would adopt as a whole at its next meeting. Uh, Jamie, I, I would like to ask Andrea, in your other, you were on, you've been an attorney for other school boards for a long time. Correct. So in that process, have you done, have you been through this process before with other school boards? I've been on the sidelines of the process, but as the attorney, I wasn't typically actively engaged in the selection. Okay. Do you have any um, knowledge that you could share with us about any of these firms that are making these proposals? Bits and pieces. I don't have any, you know, um, significant experience with anyone other than WASB. I mean, WASB I've worked with regularly. Okay, okay. then I kind of like Jamie's idea of, of having the personnel committee take a good close look at these mm -hmm. and, and making a recommendation to the board. Um, 
I, I, I guess that's the process when you're trying to replace the CEO of something. You, you get like a headhunter company to take care of getting candidates together for you? That's the, by far the most typical <coughs> procedure. Okay, and then the candidates can be from outside of the district or inside? Inside can, candidates? Internal, external candidates. Internal can, all, can apply also? Correct. Okay. All yeah, right. they would set up the confine or you know the uh, parameters about <coughs> the whole process, including when it would be posted. And then um, my understanding is most uh, search firms also recruit candidates as well. So uh, it would be both the posting and then recruitment, I believe, and which is indicated in the proposals as well. All right, thank you. <laughs> yeah, based on I don't know that first flow chart is that from you or is that from one of the consultants? It's all from the consultants. Okay, yeah, because they had, some of them broke down into single weeks as to what they do this week and then next and others give more general, but it looks like a, a three to four month process even before you get to the appointment and interview uh, stage. Yeah, I would think that that's pretty typical. And so then we're talking about March, hopefully by April being able to extend, but Take I guess the personnel committee would that consists of let's see Tom, Sandy, and Carrie. So, uh, and your next meeting is set for December second, and we would hopefully get those other proposals and have the personnel committee review those then. Well, we'd want to know if the committee wants to interview anyone, either um, telephone or in person, and then we'd also like to just uh, ask if we could flip committees so that the personnel committee could meet on December 1st instead of the 2nd. Andrea is not able to attend on the 2nd. That's fine with me. Carrie, you're good with that? All right. And, and Sandy's And the, each of the um, <clears throat> three companies that submitted proposals were very eager to come and talk to the committee as well, or the board. Companies that would come and talk to the personnel committee? They could at your request, oh, I yeah. think that's a good idea, don't you? I think that's the way to do it. Just a, just a thought in terms of the involvement of the board, there's a certain, there's a list of criteria that the board might want to give to the personnel committee in terms of uh, guiding their selection around this consultant. That might be something we might want to. And I believe that's part of the process of at least two of the three, is that after the uh, search firm would be selected, they would work with the board to identify the criteria. Um, or are you talking about the, the criteria oh, you're, just for the criteria consultant? For this, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Criteria for the consultant. I mean, okay. Oh. Yeah, Mr. President? Yes, Brian. Yeah, um, I think it'd be interesting to know, just to do some, you know, whoever we pick, I, I'd heavily weight the referrals and reference checks, not on people they give us, but, you know, on other superintendents that we know, uh, you know, in, you know in, this, in the general area, both, you know, here, maybe potentially even in uh, in Minnesota, uh, and you know, just you know, like do some reference checks and and in your experience uh, with you know through the administration, is there any? I don't know if there's any particular uh, um, agencies that have you know stronger reputations than others. You know, I don't know if you know from, from your background or. Well, I was happy to see the three that submitted proposals. Submitted proposals. Um, I think there are certainly well-known agencies that have worked with a variety of Minnesota and Wisconsin districts. Um, the one the, um, is more of a national agency, the Hazard Young, yep. um, and the School Exec Connect and WASB are a little more local School Exec Connect being located in the cities uh, as one of the branches, um, but uh, the district has worked with them in the past. Okay. That's good. Besides, cost Yeah, another another criteria that might, we might think about is um, their track record in terms of the placements that they've had and the tenure that those mm -hmm. positions have been in. Uh, isn't might be an in, should be an indication as to the success of of uh, their services in terms of getting the right match. Uh, so, right. Uh, December first is fine with me. Good. Well then, if you guys are willing to meet on December 1st, mm -hmm. obviously that puts it up even another business day. We have Thanksgiving coming up. So my question is, um, the board, or the board, the committee would do these interviews on that Monday night. Um, at what point would the reference checks come in and when 
can the can the personnel committee vote by email? That's my question. Or do they need to interview and then discuss it? Certainly, maybe you have a, a preference for one. Maybe one will rise to the top right away and it'll be obvious. But if you want to, I think we should do our due diligence, do some reference checks, mm -hmm. call a couple of the school districts that have <coughs> used those firms, maybe, and if the reference checks. May, maybe make the approval or the recommendation to the whole board pending that reference check, and if the reference check comes out positive, right. go forward with that recommendation. You could rank them, uh, one, two, three, based, dependent upon or contingent upon um, the reference check completion. All right. Yeah, and we could do that after we, after this uh, December 1st, we will be able to meet them then and talk with them then? Right, at least I would say Skype in or something like that. I don't know for sure if all of them will be able to attend. Because that's it's little short notice. notice for them. Right. Yeah. But I'll try. Mr. President? Yes, Lynn. Then would we switch learning and program development then to the second, right? It might be a good idea to do that. So flip the committees. Those that are meeting on December 1st would go to the second, and the other committees would go to the first. Facilities meet also then on the first? Yes. Okay. That makes it easier for you because you don't have to double nights for some of you. Does, okay, if learning and program development would meet on the second, is there anybody that can't meet on that night? I think Brian would need a sub. Okay. I think that me and Carrie are the designated subs, so we'll work that out as to who could uh, cover there. But it'll be a long night on December 1st then if we're doing both. Um, preference for which one first? personnel or facilities and grounds do you think that the I think it should depend on when the consultants are available I would say and I think it would be a good idea if the personnel committee met first before the consultants and just talked about criteria and questions that you would want to ask Mary can your office get those switched then so they're on our calendars pulling over to our calendars can Tim yep. take care of that I, I'm okay. sure Tim will do that <laughs> thanks Tim Andrea, would we have these other two that you've gotten information on, would we have a more thorough uh, information from them like we've got with these? I can contact them and ask them for more information and see if it, they can have it completed by the first. Okay, great. Thank you. Mr. President? Yes, Carrie. Uh, in addition to the reference checks, uh, following up with what, what Tom said about the performance and tenure, at what point would we have to vote or give the recommendation back to the board? Well, those results. well, the board meets, it's an early meeting this year, this uh, month in December, December 9th. Mm -hmm. So the committee meets on December 1st, and hopefully you can conduct your interviews, and uh, after having thoroughly read their proposals, and um, then make your preferences subject to those reference Fine. checks, which would occur over the next week. But hopefully when we meet here again in, what is that, two weeks uh, from tonight, or from tomorrow night, then we would have um, a choice to make as a board as a whole okay. with the so course, that, the so recommendation that the personnel committee would come forward with. The week would be enough time for whatever findings with placed superintendent's tenure and performance? It's going to have to be, I think okay. that, yeah. We've got, um, yeah, my, my belief, and I, I'm not on the personnel committee, but for those um, firms that have submitted proposals, I think those are the ones that should get uh, the first crack. I mean, we're, we can't wait around for these other ones who are just submitting their letters now and you know, asking for an invitation, an engraved invitation to submit a proposal. If we've got uh, three good firms that are used by, it looks like districts in the, have been used by the districts in the area, um, we should just move forward, and keep this on a, on a good timeline so that we can get the process started. So we're conducting interviews hopefully in March at the latest. Yeah, for me, um, this will work. I think we can we can get it done. The personnel committee can put our heads together and get done what we need to get done. Do the um, reference checks, things like that. I I really go along with what Tom said about the longevity of the of the candidates that the company has already recruited for other schools. That is going to be a big thing for me. We need to look at how long are the people staying that they are placing or helping school districts place in these uh, executive positions. So I agree with him. That's that's an important thing. That's in some of our, you know, some of the content that they had sent over. Right. So, you know, if, if there's some question around maybe getting it down to a couple, 
um, would, would there be any opportunity where they can maybe even come and present to the board the night where if we have questions for each of them respectively or is the intent to try and get down to one? No, I think if, if the board wants the personnel committee to come up with a couple or two or three that you, the board personally wants to talk to, I think we have to do that. This board gets to make the decision about who they're going to you know, What do you think, hire. Bruce? Well, I just think that they're, you know, to, to just have three people sitting on the board make a decision on this, it's not to say that there's not trust there. <laughs> It's, it's not so much that as much uh, you might feel that there's a couple of qualified candidates. I agree and with you, at, Bruce. You know, at that point in time, if they come and, and we ask some questions of them that evening, you know, if we're going to have to vote on it that, that night, it would be nice to, to hear from them directly and get a chance to have some eye contact with them and, you know, get to, to understand who they are and what they're about. Mr. President, maybe we should That's then it. take it out of the personnel committee and make, make it a board, uh, a board session. Well, Lynn, what do you think? I personally feel comfortable having it be in committee. I mean, that's what we have people in committees for, is to do that work and have them bring forward our, our, their recommendation to us. I don't think we should double up if you know other board members feel strongly about interviewing those candidates or those companies directly, then we shouldn't have it go to committee. We should not duplicate the work. Yeah, I agree. It's, I think it's fairly atypical um, for these kind of searches. It's a couple of uh, top shelf firms that do it. You pick one um, and then you spend more time on work in that search. Um, I'm completely comfortable the personnel committee picking the search firm we use. Yeah, I, I mean it, I, I think uh, again you guys will make that judgment. You know, you think about the other committees we're on, we, at times we might say, hey, uh, we have consensus, we all feel comfortable with this, we all locked in on this one. If there's not consensus, maybe at that point in time, you guys right. might say as a committee, hey, let's bring this in front of the board and we'll have some people talk. I mean, it's yeah. just a good opportunity to think about it and might be an option. I this think that, ma that makes a lot of sense, Bruce, is sometimes there is one that just really rises to the top yeah. and you can make a, wrong, a strong recommendation. And um, if it's so close that the committee decides that they would like these people to show up by Skype or in person for a re regular meeting, then, but I am, comfortable too with our personnel committee. And this is the reason why I suggested criteria coming from the board yeah. um, so that you could identify what were the important uh, aspects you think are important to the selection <coughs> of our recommendation. And uh, so I would still encourage that even if it's not given tonight, you know, you could pass it along to Mary or whomever. Oh, you think, you think, Tom, that um, the board members could let Mary know if they have something specific they would like the personnel committee to look at when we're right. talking to the right. people? Well, I think success rate okay. is probably number one. I mean, Resource size, success rate, right. you know, yeah. longevity. I think responsiveness is also really important. I mean, if they are from a distance away, you know, how hard is it going to be for them to get to Hudson? And um, some of these, they charge a flat rate, but then they charge expenses. So that would include flying here or whatever. And um, you know, take that into consideration. But I think responsiveness and success rate would be um, the most important, because we need them to be able to be here to give the guidance uh, to get through the process. I assume somebody's recording this. <laughs> Any other criteria then that you want to see the personnel committee apply when they're uh, helping to winnow our choices here and come up with a recommendation for our meeting in two weeks? You Anyone might else? also want to consider or ask them how many candidates they've actually brought forward. You know, how many candidates applied for various positions? Um, that would be another thing because they're trying to generate candidates for you. I would also um, just remind everybody that if you'd like to attend the personnel committee meeting, you can attend that. Just have to let me know so we can post it that way. Sure. All right. I'll follow up with Mary if anything comes to mind for me, Jamie. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone get something submitted to Mary, and then she'll get it out to the personnel committee. Any any other points on this? I, I appreciate the personnel committee's willingness to do this, but. I think it is something that can be, the focus can be sharpened when you have three people as opposed to seven doing it, but um, if it's too close of a call to make, then I guess we'll do that as a body as a whole on the ninth, all right? 
Sure, and there might be one that rises right to the top for all of us, but we just say that this is the company. Right. I mean, the ones that charge for the out by the hour on everything um, may look uh, good, but then um, in the end, they may, and may end up charging <laughs> a lot more than what the flat rate and vice versa. Flat rate may be good, but uh, they may have a lot of charges for extras. So between the cost and the success rate and responsiveness, I think you got your primary criteria. Mm -hmm. All right. G moving on then. Next. Uh, then are we set on the next steps? All right. Secondary space for learning. Okay, reorganization. Uh, tonight we're going to have a discussion on several topics. Uh, struggled a little bit with the order because some of this is a chicken and the egg syndrome. <laughs> but um, if we hop back and forth a little bit, I think that that's uh, understandable. And plus we are um, suspending Robert's rules of order here. But um, we've got lots to discuss here and hopefully move forward with some next steps. Um, primary first, I wanted to kind of set the tone, and that is uh, ref in referendum planning, a timeline. Uh, we're all familiar with the 70-day requirement, um, and that is our resolution has to be passed 70 days prior to any referendum coming forth. But I think in your materials, uh, do you know what page that is, by the way? I'm okay. Thank you. I've got to keep clicking on this uh, to get caught up there. But why don't you, let's see, who's got that? Is that you, Tracy, then with? 59. What's that? Page 59. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So why don't you just take us through that, Tracy, since you're looking in that direction and I want to stare. <laughs> sure. Um, it's relatively simple so what um, is put out here is obviously the the most um, or the the next typical election date which is the spring election and so um, if you were to schedule something you would need your res resolution uh, determined by December 9th and so then it just goes forward from there so your April 7th spring election when you would have to have your decision that middle column just tells you dates that are consistent with uh, an election that's already scheduled. So we do not have uh, an election day this November, um, but I did put on there the November 3rd, which would be a typical, that first Tuesday in November, just as other dates that are out there. Okay, we're, and again, I'm emphasizing that this is a topic for discussion. <laughs> we're not taking action. We're not setting a date for a next referendum but this gives you some idea of the time frame. Um, I'm sure other board members have been getting feedback since the referendum election. Uh, I sure have been receiving lots of feedback and we've got uh, community groups uh, that have already met and willing to provide assistance. But I put this first on the agenda just to give us some kind of idea of what we wanna do because um, that determines all these other items that we have on for discussion tonight, um, the community engagement, the pre-referendum architect selection process, and the process for consideration of potential options. If, as there's been some who have contacted me anyway, I can't speak for the rest of the board, who say, get this on the next election, well, to do that, we'd have to, at our next board meeting, approve a resolution to put on a referendum for the February 17th spring primary. I don't know, um, not having talked to the rest of the board yet about this, what is the feeling as far as um, a, a general time frame, not with uh, selecting a specific date, but um, what is the kind of the feeling for a process we're gonna have, because that's gonna dictate the length of time for public participation and um, all these other things. So I'll just open it out there for discussion on the time frame. Generally, well, I would think that some of these would be dependent upon the. the um, it looks like we're talking about getting some consulting help, some professional help around this, and determining a process to get to a uh, a question, a referendum question. That would drive, in my mind, uh, what what the options might be then for a referendum date, and subsequently then. A, a resolution approval date. So 
Um, I think it's difficult to say, well, let's do it on this date because we don't know the process which is, which is going to dictate a schedule and timing, uh, which then I think we'll know. Well, right. And as I told you, we struggle a little bit in the order of these things. For instance, um, survey. That was one of the things. Survey, question mark. If you do a post-election survey, which some districts have done after a referendum that does not pass and find out why folks voted the way they did, and if the intent is to take that survey, uh, do a little bit of tinkering with uh, the referendum, and then go right back to the community with it, then you wouldn't be going through a large public participation right. process and so forth. But uh, that's why, um, I started with this, knowing that to do the earliest next election that uh, is scheduled is February 17th, we'd have to have a resolution approved and filed by December 9th. If we're talking about a process that is going to be, you know, three to four months of public input, another three to four months perhaps for a survey, and then uh, we're, we're talking six to eight months out before we could have a resolution. So. Um, if you go, if this board goes down the road of taking the survey or the uh, referendum that was so soundly defeated and tinker with it and make a few changes and then go back again, it's going to be defeated again. That, that would be my prediction. I think we're better off starting at the beginning, putting other options into the pot, um, getting out there to the public, asking them what they think taking our time to do it and make darn sure we have the entire community on board before we go back with another referendum just to have them say no again. That's gonna take some time. Um, we can do the survey that, that you're talking about that goes out to people and says, how come you voted no? We can do that if you want that information. We can also do one that is asking various questions about what you would approve. Um, I think the survey, if, you're, if we're going to do a survey, it has to go out to every person in the school district. Because I think what happened with the other survey type things that we did, we got participation from people who had kids in the school or people who were interested in the subject. And those that uh, were going to vote no were going to vote no from the very beginning and they didn't come to anything. So we never got their opinion. Um, I think it's very premature to try to pick a date out of here or having a date that's our target date until we have done all the homework that we need to do to get this done right this time. Uh, and, oh, sorry, yeah. Bruce. Bruce? <clears throat> so I, I, you know, I totally agree that to, to think that we're going to go back uh, and have something ready by January is, in my opinion, just not feasible. We're, we're not uh, able to get the public participation uh, in that sort of time frame. And, I think it would be a very uh, foolish move uh, on our part to, to do something that hastily. Uh, I, I do think, however, we need to use these dates just as, as a guide, you know, to understand what, uh, what goals we may want to put out there. But, you know, uh, to, to know that there's uh, these different options, um, I think, is probably what's most important for us. And, um, I, I would say that we're not going to solve that this answer tonight. You know, it's it's going to be something that we're going to have to uh, to work through. Um, I do believe, and I'm hopeful that we can get some things moving concurrently. Um, you know, surveys. Um, you know, looking at other options, going back to the beginning, um, looking at all the alternatives that we have. I, I would say that um, we do need to be smart about how we advance. And that we look at, uh, you know, getting that public participation. We look at getting the um, uh, survey done if that's something we choose to do. And then, uh, in addition to that, um, you know, get some work done if we're going to bring in a, a third-party uh, consulting organization. That uh, again, each of these will have tracks that will need to to be moving forward at the same time. It, the there there is a tremendous amount of um, of uh, community involvement right now. You know, uh, more than I've seen before, and, and I think a strong willingness in the community to, to move forward uh, with a plan, and that's, that's positive, you know, that's a good thing, and we need to work on that and work from that um, and learn from it. So I, I think that, um, you know, that coupled with the fact that interest rates still today 
are very, very good uh, and in our favor that um, we owe it to ourselves and to the community to, to try and work quickly on this, but, but do it in a way that involves the community and, and, and uh, gets the right activities done as we move forward. Anybody else want to comment on this part of it, just knowing that where the different dates fall and um, we've gone out as far as April of 2016, not necessarily indicating that that's um, necessarily a target or the last date possible. We may get into this process and find that um, it may need to go longer than that, but in the end, uh, we're still more than a year away before that resolution would need to be put forth. So this is the time to talk about uh, what we're doing right now. So any, anybody else want to comment? I think having the dates is helpful, um, but I think the process will drive the timeline for when we are prepared, when we have the right question, when we have the right buy-in from the community, that will drive when we go to referendum. But I, I don't know if Mary or somebody can speak to timing as far as election cycle. I mean, I, I don't know about, um, if, I don't know that this board has had discussion about going to a referendum outside of a normally scheduled election. I think, when was Rivercrest approved or how, what was that? Rivercrest was approved in December and we did a post, a referendum survey and um, there was quite a, um, a loud voice in the community that did not like having that referendum as a special election. Okay. And the results actually showed through that survey that um, there would have been a stronger yes vote had it been on a regular election date. So I think just keeping that in mind as far as the planning you know, that we should have it tied to a regularly scheduled election so we have the turnout that we need to have and so that, you know, people don't feel like we're trying to sneak a referendum under the radar, that it's very public and very, you know, tied to a normal election when people would be out at the polls. Well, yeah, go I ahead, Brian. Plan. I think the process should dictate the timing. So we need to come up with the process first. And well, not just the process, I also think the content in the process because once we start getting the public so engaged, that's, 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 yeah, right. Right, because once we get the public engaged and they, if, if one or two or three of their options um, that, that come forward may dictate what the timing needs to be in order to um, be able to get a, a building remodeled or built by mm -hmm. a specific time period, then we know when we need to have that election. So. And I agree with Lynn, what she said about having it at a regular election. I think it will be bad for us if we try to do this at an off election. Well, all right, so with that, then we've, we've got those dates in mind. The um, next is uh, community engagement. This is a very uh, broad subject, but we've got a couple subtopics under it. One was this notion of survey. As you recall, at our last regular meeting, we put on a survey consultant or um, on the agenda for topics for action, and I pulled it because I thought it may be premature to be talking about that. You had in your materials a couple examples from school perceptions of um, surveys that they've done, um, both post-election and pre-referendum surveys. Uh, the post-election one is a two to three page, ends up costing somewhere between five and six thousand dollars to find out a gauge from the community as to why they voted uh, the way they did. I think that survey also indicates you know, some feedback in other areas of how the school district's performing. We could do that survey. You can do both. You could do that survey, engage in your public participation, and then come back with another referendum that is the longer version, the one that um, provides information, gives the community multiple options to choose from rather than just one option um, that's being moved forward. Um, so what's the, what's the board's sense on surveys? Do you wanna do one, do you wanna do two? Um. I'll go first, I guess. I don't, I'm hearing mixed feedback after the referendum. And so I don't know that this board knows enough information or enough direction to move forward with 
what our community is thinking without having a survey of some kind to you say. You mean after the election survey? Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. So you would say we, you think we do need a survey then? I do think we need a survey. Okay. Okay, are you That's talking, fine. Lynn, about the post-referendum survey or a survey going forward asking not why you voted no, but what would you vote for, giving them options and uh, uh, formulating it that question. way instead of why did you vote no or yes? What do you think? I think we need something that's going to guide us to what the community can support. So, But if you're sending out a survey like that, is there enough information that they would have to be able to make that decision? Okay. That's what I'm wondering. I, I just don't know. I don't. Well, certainly they wouldn't have enough to do the pre-referendum because we don't have enough information for that. But the post-election one is simply, the, if you voted yes, why did you vote yes? And mm -hmm. they give them a list of reasons why they supported it. And then there's uh, the, the no one, and that gives you some information. The question is what you do with it. My thought, um, from what I heard, and I called this school perceptions myself because I wanted to look into it, and his recommendation was that we not do a post-election. In his view, it was a, would be a waste of five or $6,000. And I appreciate his honesty. He says, if you want to pay me five or $6,000 to do it, I'll be happy to do it. But if you're expecting to engage in a lengthy public, well, not lengthy, but in-depth public participation process, uh, which I certainly am personally in favor, and I'll let the rest of the board, because that's part of the, this topic, um, to talk about, but if you're going to do that, those reasons will come forth anyway. I think that will be part of the public participation process is finding out what people's feelings were. Mm -hmm. um, we're all getting feedback from people who uh, uh, voted no for multiple reasons, you know, and we could sit here and spend time tonight talking about all those reasons or, you know, trying to move the process forward, and this is where I think the public participation can be particularly helpful in allowing people to um, vent those reasons, for lack of a better uh, word, but get those, air those out, and then hopefully then move forward from that process. But How do you get the reach that you need, though? That's what I'm worried about, because people who are engaged, either from a strong no or a strong yes, they'll come to meetings. How do you, how do you draw out those people who just maybe didn't know enough information, or, I mean, how, how do you intend to get the reach? That's what I'm, I don't want to spend $5,000 for nothing either, but I don't know how right. we. Well, he, here's the way the consultant explained it to me is if you're going to do a quick a referendum, like he had a district that needed to come back with a referendum fairly soon because of their space issues. And in that situation, he recommended that they do a survey and then find out what it was. In that case, I talked to, the, it was the superintendent of Arcadia. And he said there, um, they did the survey and they actually found that the community needed a specific price point. They needed to get down under $2.38. Their first referendum was $2.53 and it voted and the people voted it down. When they lowered the cost uh, by reducing, I think the number of grades in the new building they were building so that the cost got down to $2.33, it passed. So that's what they're, they found out what the chief reason was by having this survey. They felt that it was a well-spent five or $6,000. The consultant thought that if our plan is not to come back with a referendum uh, in April, because we couldn't do it in February, given that you do this post-election survey, he could get us the results by mid-January, and then we would, we'd know uh, what that was. Now, another purpose for doing the survey, I suppose, would be to give a launching point for your public participation committee, could be, if you want to use, um, and you could do both. There's nothing saying we can't do both, it's just that this consultant's recommendation was if you're going to do a public participation process, then uh, use that process to allow people to voice their concerns. Because he, he definitely was in favor of doing a survey, because he's in the do business of doing surveys, obviously, but I think the the survey that would be a pre-referendum survey would give us much better information because that also gives people a chance to, you know, say why they were against the first one mm -hmm. in the first place. And then if they're given more information, well, these are the options that I would like to see most considered. Well, I would go with the, um, with the consultant's, the survey consultant's recommendation and not do a post-referendum one. He said it 
and he would take the money, but it wasn't really necessary, and uh, go with the other one instead and find out what they want. Uh, the questions have to be formulated in a way to get that out of them, and I understand what Lynn's concern is, because I've already had a few people call me and say, well, if you do a survey, of course you're going to send it out to every household in the Hudson School District. They're all going to get it. But if they don't all respond, then you're still getting a skewed picture because those that are really want this are going to respond and those that really don't want it are going to respond and the ones maybe in the middle that would vote for it if, they, if it was this and wouldn't vote for it if it was that, they might not respond and still we're still going to have a picture that's not quite what we're looking for. Is I that asked what you're him, saying, Lynn? Well, I asked him about that and he said that they, he's done hundreds of these and actually has refined this process over well over a dozen years and um, probably closer to 20 years. But anyway, he's done this for a long time and they've gotten very close. And they can account for some of that too. They look at where the surveys are coming back from because there's some demographics in that longer survey. If you looked, um, people check off what their age group is, whether they have kids in the district, whether they're an employee of the district and so forth. So you get some of that back and you can find out whether they voted yes on the first referendum or no. So all that can be part of the survey results. And he's, he finds that the longer survey tends to be the one that actually has a lot of success. The so big, maybe a better response to right. the longer one? Right. And I suppose they're sent um, self-addressed stamped envelopes so it makes it really easy for people to send it back? Yeah, I think that there's some kind of uh, postage prepaid yeah. all right. that they put on that. Yeah. Did, did he talk about the response rate at all? Typically what he's seeing? With his surveys, I have varies by community, um, I think. But uh, and does he have uh, electronic means of submitting surveys as well? Right. Yes. In fact, that's part of the pricing. Is you get more the more people that participate electronically, then it brings your cost down because then you don't have as much postage and okay. um, you know handling because you have to open all of those and physically enter the data. Um, it's much quicker to do it online. I assume we're going to go through a process also of uh, determining uh, a service around this as well. There's going to be a selection process for the uh, consultant for this as well. Yeah, there's, I think, fewer firms that do these. Mm -hmm. But yes, when we're ready to look at the surveys, I think that that's something either facilities and grounds or mm -hmm. somebody like a committee could probably make a recommendation. Maybe personnel would want to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have any, any suggestion about how soon a survey should be sent out after a referendum like this? I mean, we're not doing the post-referendum mm -hmm. survey, but how, how quickly should we be, be able to s be sending one out? Well, again, that goes back to the chicken and the egg thing I was talking about, because how fast do you, um, when do we expect to go to election? Okay, he, he, got it. He said for this to work right, to do it right, it takes him some time to formulate the questions which is used from the information you glean from the public participation process. But typically 60 to 90 days is what okay. he says it takes him to be able to form the survey, mail it out, get the results, tabulate them, form them, provide a report. So, so we got a problem, right? I mean, you talk about this district that wanted to get back to a quick, we need to get back to a quick, right? So I mean, we gotta be working fast here. Um, we need to be working smart. I'm not saying to cut corners or not do things, but I, I think we need to be acting very quickly to solve this problem. I, I, I really personally don't want to see us sitting on anything. We need to keep moving. We need to keep the momentum going, and we need to work to get this problem solved. So, uh, you know, if we're going to do a survey, uh, and, and I think that the post-referendum survey probably doesn't make a lot of sense. We've gotten a lot of good feedback right now. Um, I think we can get uh, much more good feedback to, to provide uh, the community group to have some good direction and input. But personally, 60 to 90 days to form a survey is a long time. I'm pretty sure you can truncate that. I would encourage. No, it's not just to form it. It's to no. formulate to it, it and do it, and then right. get the results back. Um, maybe options. I'm not sure this thing's on. Yep, it's okay. And maybe Just the options. Uh, yeah, the survey may have options in there, so they need to be flushed out. So there, it's not just you know getting the survey put together. It's literally there may be some options we talk about. Would you vote for this? Would you vote for that? Sure. Where do you you know? Um, so that, that's the idea is we want more, you know, specifics in the survey. Yeah. So we can get some reaction and we can kind of gauge 
um, we can gauge level of interest on in certain options in the survey. Yeah, I, I get that. Um, it makes sense. I just, you know, I think while we've got, uh, I know we've got the holidays coming up here, but, you know, I, I think we need to to probably be putting some more time in on this ourselves, you know, and not wait for another month to get back together. If, if we need to get back together sooner or, you know, work to, to get some of these things moving forward, I would just encourage that we're, you know, double timing in here as much as we can on actions that we can double time it on. Um, and I understand that there are some things you can't just move that quickly on, but I, I, I think we need to be mindful that we need to, we need to get this problem solved. Agree. The yes. Would the survey have, um, the survey that we send out would be giving the public, asking their opinion on specific options that, that the board has decided we would include in the options? Is that the idea of the survey? Well, possibly. I don't necessarily envision as the board's options, but rather the public participation group. And okay, what will this the is where it bleeds into again, back to all of this, we're jumping around a little bit, but um, the community engagement consultant, um, we need to talk about that as well, because this, this is one of those things that we can get going now on that we don't have to wait on. And that's why I wanted to get the advice of some experts on doing this. Mm -hmm. I think our goal of meeting here tonight is to move forward in as reasonable a time period, as short a time period as is, we'll still do the job right. All right, so we wanna move with um, diligence here, but also uh, not with haste. And to do it right, I'd like to pull in a, a consultant who um, knows how to get the public involved not just involved, but to a point on the involvement spectrum of collaboration, where they work with the board in reaching this decision, because that's how we're gonna get a referendum passed. Um, and so I would like to see us um, maybe talk about the facilities and grounds committee, uh, looking at selecting a, a consultant. And um, there's a couple that I've already talked to, and their materials were in your materials. One is uh, Ann Carroll, and another is Eric Biltonen. Um, the, these would be people who would help us define our process. Um, how do you set up a group, a public participation group? Um, how do you empower them? What size should they be? How do you select their, the makeup of that uh, board? And how do you encourage greater public participation other than those people who are, you know, directly stakeholders in that group? These are all questions that I'm not as comfortable for us to just dictate. I don't, I don't have necessarily experience in this, but the, there are, these people do have experience in those areas. And they can sit down, whether it's sit down with the facilities and grounds committee or select, sit down with a couple of the officers off the school board or whomever. Um, and then maybe a couple community stakeholders to come up with a plan that we can then come forward and adopt at our next meeting on December 9th. And hopefully that meets your timeline, Bruce, of moving this forward as quickly as we can. But if we could select a consultant who will then sit down and say, okay, we want this person now, this Ann Carroll, um, her fee is on an hourly basis. She said, I can be involved in one meeting, I could be involved in 10 meetings. Um, but I think we need someone to help give us structure that has experience do the, doing this in other communities at large levels and getting as great of public participation as possible. And um, she's, she was willing to come here tonight, but I thought it was a little bit premature. And she does have a conflict on December 9th. But um, I did not talk to her about uh, uh, December 1st, so I could call her and see if she'd be willing to come to the Facilities and Grounds Committee meeting. How did you come across her name? Um, I guess the, uh, some kind of search, uh, we would search for consultants who get into the public participation, but. Um, so what Ann specializes is a particular uh, strategy in public participation, it's called the IAP2. And um, she, I went through that training and contacted some Wisconsin folks who are trainers, and they recommended Ann. So Ann was the one of the closest folks versus uh, other trainers who are in the Milwaukee area. 
So am I understanding correctly this, this Anne or this Eric, um, they would help us properly create an, a community group, a community committee? The, yeah, it's, it's more than that. Just finding out what, um, how can we utilize public participation to its fullest and then what our time frame. They would help us also with what's a realistic time frame for doing all of this. Um, I've got an idea of what I, but I don't know if that's realistic or not. Um, you know, what I'd like to see, hopefully we get a group of people that's willing, and believe me, I've already got many, many volunteers who have emailed me, said, here's my background and training, this is my interest, I've got kids in the school, or I've got grandkids in the school, or whatever, and I'd love to be part of the process. We've got people willing to be part of the process, we've got to figure out how that process can work the best. And... Um, that's where this expert uh, comes in to help us get that set up. And I, I don't mean to be obtuse here, but I'm trying not to be too sp specific because I don't want to dictate what that process right. should be. I want an expert to tell us um, how it would be best. Then we come forward at our December 9th meeting. If uh, Ms. Carroll, who, yeah, she's involved in this IAP too. She's on their, on their board of directors. She's got received training in this process. Um, I had a community member send me uh, an email with a link to that um, and we can send, share that with the rest of the board but it was interesting and informative to go on their website as to how you get full partic public participation and um, so I think it's a process that can work and, and help us get a majority of the folks behind a, a solution here. It could be a combination actually this Eric uh, Bilton and I also spoke to him he actually works for the UW extension, and uh, he's got a degree. Um, now, did his personal information get into the materials? Because he only sent it to me at 3 o'clock this afternoon. It was supposed to come last Friday, and uh, it is in there. Okay, so if you turn to his, he's, got, he's actually got a PhD, but uh, and a lot of his services he believes would... Um, come under his job description at the UW Extension so that there wouldn't necessarily be a cost to the district. Um, there may be some cost if it's outside of those parameters, um, if there's some additional expense involved. But what I envision is perhaps um, Ms. Carroll gives us some structure and we take it from there. She doesn't necessarily have to be involved in moderating the meetings, but then we may maybe have somebody like Mr. Bilton and who has worked on very large projects very controversial things and gotten public participation, he could be the moderator for the group, so to speak, that's independent, not making any decisions, but making sure that the process is run smoothly. I have a question, Tracy. When, um, when we had the cafe meetings before, that was done, you worked with somebody through the UW River Falls, so that, it wasn't, was it this guy? It was not this gentleman. Um, it was his predecessor. That uh, gentleman was also from UW Extension Services. Okay, so... He's no longer there. But the process that we did with those meetings, those cafe meetings, they called them, we're not, you're not talking That's about... That's one strategy used by IAP2. That's just one strategy. There's, um, in, in your um, information there, when you look at um, Ann Carroll's information, you'll see a spectrum of all of the different um, kinds of strategies that you can use to engage the community. So the cafes or the community conversations are just one small item within hundreds of different ways to engage your community. Okay, because I wouldn't want to go down that same, I wouldn't want to do the same thing we did before. No. Uh, Jamie, I think the, yes. di the difference between that, what we did before and what I think we need to go to now is going, it was a qualitative, it was more of a qualitative kind of studies we had 800 survey respondents. You know, if you count the number of votes, the number of no votes are around 8,000. That's 10 percent. You know, typically what you need is, in service from what I know, and I'm not an expert in this, is about a 30 percent response from the community in order to get uh, um, a, a, a valuable or a viable uh, res response rate. Uh, that's what I think we need to go to. We need to go to a quantitative study that is scientifically is going to give us a, a, a margin of error, four to six percent either way, 
uh, something like that. I mean, it's similar to market studies that are done that I've been part of before. And I think that's what, that's what in my view, that's what we need. We need to know exactly what, what uh, people and the, and the majority are, uh, what they value in terms of education, what they're willing to pay for, and, and any other questions that, uh, that uh, go along with a survey. But um, that's the difference. Yeah, thanks, Tom. For I think here we're not talking so much about the survey. I think we're talking more about this um, community engagement. Mm -hmm. So I think here we have, uh, I know some members uh, uh, in the audience right here who have, kind of, who have already volunteered to be part of some kind of an engagement process, right. whether we call it a, a working group or something like that. But I think the idea there is just to kind of formulate that strategy, um, the board involvement, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the makeup of that kind of committee, and I think that's that's kind of more in line with what, what we're looking for right here. Well, I think yeah. that's good clarification, yeah. Yeah. and so that what you just described in terms of community engagement yeah. is a first step to get to ultimately. Ultimately, there has to be uh, some kind of quantitative study that's done that will give us uh, a pretty a pretty good assurance. Uh, of a success. Yeah. I think that's, and that's the idea of maybe having a pretty robust survey that goes out that maybe with this community engagement we have some options laid out. So the idea there with the surveys we get more specific kind of um, data around community acceptance of different kind of demographic groups. Mm -hmm. But right now there, what we want to do is get the community engaged. We just want to make sure we do it in a really effective manner. Yep. And, uh, that's, and that's the people that you know, Jamie's suggesting, is there, is there someone that has expertise in putting these groups together? Because we have a lot of interest right now. We yeah. want to make, just want to make sure we do the right thing. I mean, we can, I think we all have maybe s some ideas about how we put the group together. We just want to make sure that uh, we do it in an effective manner. Is that what you're saying, Jamie? I guess, yes, that's right, Brian. You know, one of the criticisms um, that I've seen in the different feedback that was all part of our materials is that, um, folks were not happy that we only put one option on the referendum, um, you know, that they didn't have multiple, a multiple choice referendum. Well, as you know, the reality is that's the legal requirement, that's the statute. You can't have a, a, a multiple choice where one of the options gets 25% support and that ends up being the one that you go with. But this allows us to take a step back, um, allow the public to formulate um, and gravitate towards the options, maybe have a handful maybe, and that's what you put on this survey. So that way um, it's coming from the public and then be judged by the public. And then that will give us as board members, I think a much better gauge as to where the community is going uh, for this. And so it's, it's kind of a part of a process. It's setting the process first, but getting expert help with that. And um, that's why I'm suggesting that the Facilities and Ground Committee, maybe talk to uh, Ms. Carroll and Mr. Bolton and see how they can, uh, or is it Bolton and Bolton and, um, and see how they best, could, we could best utilize our skills. And like I said, maybe it's a mixture. Maybe the one is more on the front end and the other is more of a facilitator either way. Um, maybe they recommend that uh, somebody completely different moderates it, who knows, but um, in the end, we want to maximize that public participation and get to the area, the end of the spectrum that is collaboration with the public in coming up with the, in this decision. Because ultimately, we do empower the folks, the folks because they vote. But I, for one, don't want to put up another referendum that we're just guessing is going to um, get passed by a majority of the folks. So, so this is definitely part of a process, but really important part to get it started on the right foot. So I, I think it's a, a, a good idea. Um, I am concerned about just the two people and how we got those two people. Um, I want to make sure that, you know, if this is posted or if, if this is known, or if people can submit, you know, hey, I want, I'd, I'd love to participate in this, you know, because I, 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 I think us going and finding them has a little different connotation than those that are, uh, seeking out opportunities to participate in something like this. So, you know, I just want to make sure that we're thinking about that. 
Um, and if we only have two, then we only have two, and then we need to speak to those two individuals and see if we're comfortable with them. Um, the other th thought, and I'm not sure if this is of any interest or not, but you know, do we include some folks from the community in on this? You know, and is that an opportunity? Because if we're going to have some people from the community working with this individual, um, we need to make sure that there's a, a, a connection there as well. That we're not just, you know, bestowing this individual to work with uh, people in the community. And I understand that you know that's our responsibility, and I get that, and I. I think that um, we would do a very fine job of selecting someone, but I think that there are um, a, a opportunities to maybe engage the community here as well. Just I have some a thoughts. question. Yeah, same. Right, if you're done, Bruce. Yeah, I am. Okay. Didn't want to interrupt you, but I do have a question. Um, these two names that we have here, they were obtained how? They volunteered? So the first person, the IAP2, right? Um, so the IAP2 is a well-known um, spectrum of public engagement. So um, I contacted a person in Wisconsin that I had trained through, um, went through IAP2 training, and she was not able to. But then um, offered up another person who offered up another person, and that ended up being Anne. Okay. Um, and then pass that information on to Jamie. And then the other, um, we've worked with UW River, or UW Extension, as you mentioned earlier, to do um, public participation work. And that's part of their responsibility in their, um, their mission. And so I just contacted Extension to see if there was anybody available who could do this kind of work. And so that name was given to me, I did not um, talk with the gentleman. I handed that information over to Jamie. Do you know if there are other other companies that do this kind of thing? The um, public participation usually. I, I I'm sure there are, um, but the IAP two is pretty specific, <coughs> um, and it's also fairly comprehensive. So there's probably other people in different states. If we start to reach out further. Okay. Thank you. Well, my thought is, again, is to meet these people, at least. And if you're not comfortable and you want to broaden the search, but rather than bring in somebody from New York or Los Angeles, I thought it was a good idea to start with somebody that is in St. Paul, actually has experience. She's on the Board of Education in St. Paul, so knows something a little bit about that process. So she's got a lot of qualifications, and the hourly rate at 125 and she didn't say that her first meeting was gratis, but she was willing to come here to this meeting, so I'm assuming she'd be willing to come to the committee meeting if she doesn't have a conflict. And if she doesn't seem like a good fit or doesn't seem like she knows what she's doing, then we don't hire her. Um, but again, that would be a screening by the, pers uh, by the facilities and grounds is what I'm proposing. Uh, again, that's Sandy, me, and Tom to then determine if this is somebody that we can recommend to the board as a whole, we report that on December 9th and we hire the person. And if we don't, would we issue an RFP or what would we do if you don't feel comfortable going forward in that? Well, we go fashion? ahead and we could try and plan this ourselves too. I mean, that's the other thing is we don't have to hire a consultant. The one thing I like about hiring an independent consultant is the way that they drive the process, there isn't this, the school district is pushing these things forward. They're leading and guiding the community and the district. You know, it's it's an independent process where it's not, you know, I think some people felt like the results of the survey that we did before were issued and controlled by the school district and only sent to school voting yes people. So I think that having somebody set this up where this community and this community engagement is um, independent and led by someone with that expertise would be helpful. So I, I can support facilities and grounds, interviewing them and making a recommendation to the board? Yeah, on her, uh, in her materials, which she said she would send, and she did, so she followed through. She's got, start off on the right foot with some integrity there, but she pulled together some fairly generic content, and she said that number one, it would be determine engagement objectives and overall level of engagement, and the commit and commit to engagement values. This is that under that IAP2 spectrum and the core values, and then would assist in helping map the stakeholders, who are the people that need to be you know, key stakeholders in this effort, and then set the engagement parameters 
and then uh, stakeholder engagement design and implementation plan uh, and then stakeholder communications these are all areas that she has worked in and again it would help us are we realistic in trying to do this in 90 to 120 days maybe she say we're not but um, or maybe she'll say it depends on how often your group how committed is are these 12 to 18 individuals going to be if that's the size that we ultimately decide but to me at least get the interviewing process started um, at the committee level and if we can make recommendations to the board and then hopefully we can move forward with a couple meetings before the end of the year and by early January start selecting people for this uh, uh, committee or group that's going to help lead this public participation right. there's, there's a lot of interest right now and we want to capitalize on that before they become disinterested right. so right. the sooner we can uh, yeah, I don't want to wait put out an RFP have some people respond right. after uh, Christmas then in early January start interviewing people just to be a consultant to get the process rolling it, it would be March before we'd be able to get the group together I think we can work faster than that I think if we ask for applications of people interested in participating on some kind of committee, whatever that's going to be, we'd probably have 40 applications How by, could we by do our that? next meeting. How could we do that? Could we put something in the paper? I don't know how many people get the paper. I don't know if that's the best way to go, but if we put something in the paper saying we're trying to set up a community group for this process, um, if you're interested, call this number or somebody call. You, well, um, or email in. Um, I don't. I. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there as an idea of how to. I guess if we know we're going to do public participation, there's no magic date to say when. Uh, when we would open it up to people willing to throw their name in, in the ring. But so, Mary, maybe you have an idea because well, I don't want to put a lot of. Somebody's going to have to have the work of accepting those applications, if you will, and collating them. And I just don't want anybody excluded. Right. So I think that's um, what the consultant would do to help get, make recommendations to the board about what are the strategies to select from, and then you would be making those decisions about which strategies you're selecting. But they would have had that experience in multiple settings to talk about, well, here's one way you could do it, here's another way you could do it, and um, talk through that process, and then you would be making the final decisions. Okay. I think there's no, you can't avoid excluding people. I think what you wanna do is you want to have representation from you know key segments of the community that I think a consultant can identify so that the voices are represented not everybody's at the table yeah. okay so is there any other comments on the idea of going forward with uh, facilities and ground interviewing uh, these consultants and making a recommendation to the board as a whole at the December 9 meeting I'm good with it. Just the uh, couple of quick comments. <clears throat> I'd like to be, uh, I guess, in, interested to know if there's a if there's a set amount of time. Like, do we need to sign up for 20 hours? Do we need to sign up for our 50 hours? So if you could just get some understanding there, um, or if it's you know set time frames, and then um, you know much like we so are, are for what? like it, how much it, consulting minimum time? Of 20 hours. You know, I, you, you know, I'm not going to oh. sign up if it's only five hour engagement. Actually, she yeah. said no. She said okay. it's 125 an hour. If we use it okay. for two hours, we pay her 250 That's bucks. That's cool. Good. So, uh, oh, and then, so no minimum. What's that? No, no minimum. minimum hours? No minimum. Okay. And then references, you know, just some people we can check with. That's all. I'm good with that. Okay. Anybody else? Other mm -hmm. comments on that? Okay. So that's uh, one of the steps we'll take care of. Um, also under well, anything else under community engagement that I'm uh, missing? All right. Would this person have knowledge in uh, surveys too? Um, I don't know. That's a great question, Bruce. Um, we didn't discuss that specifically. I wasn't expecting that they would be involved in that, but I think if they know that that's our goal, that we want to get to a spot where we're putting forth to the public choices, you know, three to six options for this, um, that would help them to help us define the process well both questions and you know as we're going through interviews it just a thought I mean you're you're gonna be hitting a few of these things in the same night I presume right so just just something to think about there okay 
Anything else? I mean, I'm, yeah, I, I was skeptical at first too about these surveys, but um, they've, they come with excellent references. Um, and he said it's, they have a very low margin of error when it comes back to, you know, gauging what the community feels about the different options, if it's done right. You know, we certainly, and that's the way we want to do it. So whatever time is appropriate, that's what we want to give it. Um, trying to get ahead of my, uh, some of these surveys are pretty in depth as you could see, like this one from Black River Falls School District mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. they were, they were uh, educating the public on the different options, but then saying, okay, if it would cost this much, would you approve it? If it costs this much, would you make you more likely to vote for it or less likely? These are, um, you know, a good, uh, good gauge for us. Now, the next would be... Hey, James. Yes. Sorry. I guess I just want to understand timeline a little bit here. Um, and so the, the interviews would happen next week, and then we would have our, the, the board meeting the following week, and we'd be taking action at that point in time? Right. We so would say, be, consultant, you're on. What, what are your recommendations? And he or she will say, I'll meet with you guys tomorrow night if there's three of you that want to meet. She'll help us decide whether it's going to be working through the facilities and grounds committee, which is one option. could be working through the officers of the board or if we have, you know, volunteers to make up this um, public participation committee, if you will, mm -hmm. um, planning planning this and how we're going to do it? Do we engage a couple of key stakeholders from the community that could help in this process? But I think she didn't put a specific, she didn't say she needs a minimum amount of time, but... Yeah, uh, not, not, sorry, I didn't mean to get off track on that, uh, on the time frame, I just was curious, but, um, you know, I'm, again, just thinking about, you know, where we're at here, if we're on the 9th now, it's the 24th today, so... You know, it's a couple weeks out, right, um, before we would be able to, to get started with that community involvement, if I'm understanding it correctly. Because, it, I mean, we could, we could all come up with our ideas. I'm sure there's, a, you know, as Brian's point earlier, we probably have some idea of who we think needs to participate in this type of activity, but it is probably a little premature for us to be making those recommendations if we're going to be bringing an expert in that has done this before and can make sure that we're doing it in a, in a way that, that doesn't, um, you know, maybe start off on the wrong foot. So um, with that said, then, you know, we've got the meeting on the 9th in which we're going to be making some decisions. Um, w I think we need to be thinking as a group, or maybe you talk about this in facilities and grounds, uh, um, if you guys, again, have consensus at that point in time, to, to get something scheduled, whether it's a work session or uh, a a team meeting or whomever the the folks will be that will be participating in this um, you know before we get to the holidays because if we're starting to think about those dates on the 9th you know we're already going to be that much closer to to um, you know Christmas coming up and I just want to make sure we're getting dates so just asking that we're starting to get some things on the calendar here before we hit January 1 um, so if you guys want to come up with those, those dates or if we want to make sure that we're getting that at least circulated beforehand, I would prefer that we do that. Well, we have recently polled the board for December dates before the winter holiday. Yeah, for and, work session. Um, yeah. Right, and we have one on December 15th, but it's, it's on another topic. And um, it is on 2014-15 salaries, and it really will take the, that whole work session. So there wasn't another date that we had um, at least six of the seven board members available to attend um, at least uh, during the time period that we ask. Now, if there's a time in between um, coming up to New Year's, I don't know about that, but I know people are traveling. So we also have to make sure that the consultant would be available to meet with the board um, on whatever date that is. So I think it, it's a good idea to have facilities and grounds talk about it and try to plan out. We do have a work session scheduled in January for sure, and um, I'm assuming it would be on secondary space. No matter what, we may need to um, do another one early January as well. But yeah. Yeah, Bruce, 
I get you want to move fast. This is going to take time. So I know you want to push, like, literally, it's the end of the year. People are really busy. Yeah. This is, this is going to move at a certain pace. Yeah, as I, much I, as you want to move it that fast, it's not going to move that fast. Yeah, I understand that, but so, I, I don't think it's bad. I mean, that's why we have a work session, right? I mean, we have to yeah. talk about these things and, and make sure that we're, we're getting them out there. You yeah. know, me personally, I, I would like to be a part of this yeah. committee, and, and I don't sit on L, uh, the facilities and grounds, and I don't sit on personnel. So, you know, from a... Uh, you, you know, if we're going to have a separate committee or if we're going to do it as a group, I just, I think we need to talk about how we're going to move forward here as a board. And, um, you know, it's, it's one of my concerns. Got to get it out. Well, I'm just throwing, again, you're right. That's what this is. This is a work meeting to just kind of discuss ideas and um, set parameters, but not um, any kind of action items necessarily. I think uh, we need to have a smaller group help define uh, what that process might be because the bigger the group and generally it gets a little bit more cumbersome but um, so if you want to be on it we could you know after the facility and ground does that initial interview and if uh, we've got two or three board members that want to be part of that planning process and maybe have the day after Christmas available to meet with the consultant um, they could do that the day before maybe. Yeah, <laughs> just kidding. I'm just uh, kidding. The um, and then we could, um, you know, get something done. My, what I would prefer though is that those one or two meetings um, that establish just kind of put as a skeleton and a little more meat around the framework of how this process is going to go, and then we come back on our January 14th school board meeting, and hopefully be able to approve. A process that will open it up for you know applications from the public at that point to get on this committee and hopefully um, get it started you know before the end of January so we have a you know opportunity for them to meet whether they're going to meet weekly or bi-weekly or semi-weekly whatever um, it takes to get the job done anybody else no I just I think I understand what Bruce is saying that if we have, if we meet on December 9th, we decide by then that we're going to use, we're going to recommend using one of those two people to do the formulation work to choose the group. Um, you'd like to see that happen in December before January. You would like to, this, the sooner the better. Like if we had decided on December 9th who we're going to use, the following week you'd like to have a meeting to start them on their work. I, I, I mean, why wait a month? Yeah. If we're, I, you know, that's all, that's I, all I'm suggesting. I hear you. Exactly I hear you totally, saying. Bruce. Well, one thing we could do is, I mean, um, is there any kind of parameters? I mean, to hire, just as an example, um, uh, Ms. Carroll, and we interview her. We decide that she's the right person for getting this framework started. Could we have a meeting before even the December 9th school board meeting to flush that out? Is that possible? I mean, we're, at that point, we'd be spending money if she comes over for a two-hour or three-hour meeting and we're able to put together a skeleton that will actually have an action item to bring back to the board, or do we need board approval to hire somebody at $125 an hour for five hours? Well, certainly we could have a consultant come in and you could meet with them. I just, I'm not sure about her process or what it takes right. or what we she don't needs even know to she's know available, first. Right. Um, so I, I'm, I really can't much comment on that. It's, it's not much time between now and right. December 1st. I mean, if we were talking about these uh, uh, superintendent search firms that cost eighteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, that's a different story. That's something that I want to see the whole board be involved in that decision. But to get this ball at least rolling and not so that it starts rolling back downhill, I, you know, I don't know. I want to hear from the other board members because... I'm already on facilities and grounds. I want to know if we've got, so, you want to empower us to move forward and well, meet with her, um, then we'll do that. My comments, that people in the community are already meeting, right? I mean, they're, 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 people are ready to get engaged. They want to get engaged, you know? So to, to push this off further, I just think is, um, is taken away from some of the that momentum that's possibly out Can there. Can facilities and grounds uh, come back on the 9th with a recommendation and we could do an action item on the 9th to hire 
either one of those these two people? Oh, yes. Sure. But I was talking about meeting with them even before the ninth. That's what I mean, to be able to talk about this process. Maybe in the course of that, we decide, oh, this sounds like it's a little bit too esoteric. Maybe this isn't the right, right. All I'm suggesting is if her schedule were to allow it, if his or her, and if he or she can meet with the committee and you guys are available to meet, we could do a little bit more than just an interview and a recommendation to hire on December 9th. We could actually have the framework or skeleton for process in place. Okay. Could we add her on to the December 9th meeting? To talk about that? Mm -hmm. Sure, I think that's what we could do, but I think trying to do it and rush it any more before that, um, you know, I don't know what her process is, and I wanna make sure that we give her time as well. That's so right. we could, um, let's see what happens out of facilities and grounds, talk about strategy there. And so what I'm sensing from you is, you know, you want to move this forward as soon as you can to start this process of strategy, whatever that happens to be, um, and that you make decisions right. about. Yeah, she's just not available on December 9th because she's meeting with the St. Oh, Paul sorry. Board of Education on December 9th. So, uh, yes. Question. <laughs> Sounds like with whomever's hired with to kind of organize the community involvement, there's not going to be anyone precluded from being in that group. Like, well, in what be, group? What do you, which one are we talking about? The now? community involvement. Why, why are people having to submit applications? If, if they want to be involved, they can't be involved? They have, to, they have to be selected? Well, I think that's where the consultant can help us. Maybe the consultant says you don't have any members and it's just whoever shows up one week and doesn't show up the next, maybe they'll recommend that, but I think that if for this to have some, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, some gravitas, you're, you know, something uh, that people are gonna buy into, it's gonna have to have some structure where, um, I don't wanna cut anyone's voice off at all. I, I, if that's where you're coming from, I agree with that 100%. But you end up, when you have a group, you've got to have a leader of a group, and you've got to oh, sure. um, uh, you know, empower certain people to be... Because ultimately, I would like to see this group do more than just people being able to get up and give their two cents worth. I want to right. see this m group be able to move the ball forward and start uh, narrowing the options. Discuss them fully, mm -hmm. and um, that's why our next process here is about talking about pre-referendum architect because that process also has to be going at the same time. We're gonna to have to have several balls in the air, but um, to get somebody, and Tim, you're gonna fill us in on that time frame. but you know, when we finally find a pre-referendum architect, maybe that person can then help answer this public group's mm -hmm. questions as to what it would cost to remodel the high school, or what would it cost to build uh, this type of facility on this X piece think, of property. I think what you're saying though, is if it's a committee, Carrie, you know, when you have 50 people submit and say, I want to be on the committee, I mean, it's tough to have a 50-person committee and actually, you know, move it forward. That committee, I'm sure, again, we'll have to get some counsel on it, but they'll have community involvement meetings and, you know, get the voice yeah. of the community involved, so. Yeah, there's different levels of involvement. Right, That's right. So, you know, that committee may be the group that decides what the plan is and how do we engage the larger community. So what kind of strategies are we going to do? And it, because it's not going to stop with whatever that, that original group comes together, that balanced group of folks that comes together, they're going to develop the plan potentially. I mean, that's, that's one of the ways you do it. And then there are multiple groups out there that may be doing different things and engaged in different ways with, um, and they provide the board input along the way. So you could have hundreds of people involved. Yeah, it sounds like there may be hundreds. Yeah, there probably are. You mean yeah. like, like little subcommittees who are doing, who are coming up with their ideas and having their meetings and troubleshooting right. things and then come back to the large committee and then come to us? So um, at some point maybe there's, so what's an obstacle or what's the challenges or we wanna know more information about this. Maybe there's a group that does the work on that. Okay. So it, it's really whatever you, that um, initial group that your consultant works with to pull together that plan and then there's, there may be several groups. That doesn't mean the timeline extends. You've just got multiple groups of folks working out there. All right. Yeah, because I agree with Carrie. I don't want any, I would like to have no voices excluded. Uh, 
the idea would be to figure out how to get them all included without becoming cumbersome with 50 people on a committee, you will get nothing done. Uh, maybe a main committee and then subcommittees studying various things could work. But right. that's, what the, that's what the company will help us with, right? right? that's what the consultant will okay. help us with. Ultimately, though, you know, as the board, we will have some expectations and, you know, setting some kind of target date. Uh, maybe it's a time range as opposed to a specific date. But if we're going to empower this public, you have to give, you have to put some right. date on it. Otherwise, people will just keep talking and talking and talking. We need to be able to say, here's what you need to work towards is the ideal would be to come back with information that we can put in a survey that we want to go out to the public by the end of April or whatever that date is. Again, that's working with our survey consultant that we end up, you know, what, what, when do you need this information by in order to get a survey out before the end of the school year? That, that would be uh, uh, one of the questions we could ask. It may, it may end up being we don't want it by the end of the school year. May, we may have to extend it, but um, anyway, any, was there any more comment about this? The, it's an important piece. But um, it's again, which comes first, the uh, public participation or the process? And so I think ultimately we had to decide what that process is going to be and then try to move as quickly as we can. Anything else? All right, the next is pre referendum architect selection process and timeline. So, in the area of being able to walk and chew gum at the same time, that's the part where we want to be able to. Select, we gotta select a new superintendent. We have to be able to get public participation on this and then we need um, uh, expert input as to what um, this whole pre-referendum deal is gonna involve. So Tim, why don't you walk us through that? Sure, so just in looking at the columns across the top are the actions and then the responsible party, that's been left blank. You'll need to determine who would be the responsible party and then the timeline is um, somewhat similar to the process we used last time. It's probably a little tight if that so you're looking at a, a process that's just over two months to do and so the first thing is to develop uh, the request for qualifications for architectural support and that would that could be done starting the week of December 1st uh, facilities and grounds could possibly look at that uh, criteria um, the part that takes the longest in this is the invitation to submit uh, the qualifications for the firms to submit qualifications and so that's about a month long process and then you come back and uh, a group would review and evaluate those submitted qual requests for qualifications and develop a short list of firms uh, for which you'd go on to interviews after that and uh, moving on interview the selected firms uh, select finalist and then do re perform reference checks on that firm. And then negotiating the scope of services, so you know how narrow or how broad is this going to be? And then looking at compensation and drafting an agreement, getting it to legal through legal review. And that, uh, I've got a very short window of time, February 2nd through the 6th, that is very short. And that's why if, when you go down to the very last item is a tentative selection of the firm subject to, a, to an agreement. Uh, and that would be February 10th. So this would be our goal. To be able, and in order to have somebody ready to consult with us and with this uh, public participation committee or group, whatever their title is going to be, um, that's the soonest that the pre-referendum architect would be available to provide right. those services. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, what do you need um, basically from us? It would be, is it the whole board selects the firm or do we winnow the list or does the facilities and ground do that? Does personnel or finance do that? Well, I can, I can just really speak to uh, the previous process and so uh, under the first one of developing the qualifications, uh, that was done by administration. Uh, the invitation to submit and the ads that go out, we, we hit uh, Builders Exchange in both Wisconsin and Minnesota, and that gives us a pretty broad coverage. Uh, a lot of professional firms get that information, so that gets us a good response. Um, so when we get down to the interviewing of the selected firms, we had 
I believe we had one or two people from facilities and grounds and then uh, some administrative folks uh, that interviewed the firm and selected a finalist. And uh, we performed the re reference checks. I performed reference checks on the, on the finalists and then uh, negotiating. And so again, I filled in the bottom blank because I'm sure you know, that would be a board action when you uh, select the firm. But that was the what was the process that we used the last time around. Okay. So we're a little bit more than two months out from that decision date. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, have a, I have a question. Are we premature? Because if we get the committees working by the first part of January, are they going? Is the committee going to need any of this kind of help right away? Um, uh, I just, this just seems like this is premature to, to do this at this point. You could, you could get somebody on board. You don't necessarily have to engage your services right away. Um, oh, right. You could, you could, yeah. but the, the point would be to get, uh, get through the selection process and decide who you want to work through that, right, to provide that support. And not engage them until we're ready. Right. right. Yeah, they're available to answer questions, and then they do work as we see you know, okay. fit to, to ask them to do, or, you know, we empower the public group to, you know, ask questions and so forth. Yeah, if we delay it further, our next regular board meeting to take action on this would be in March, and then we're, then this committee could be already two months into their work or a month and a half into their work, and uh, we don't have an architect available, you know, to, for them to consult with. Well, the reason I ask is because when we talked before about a, a referendum date, and Lynn and I agree that it really needs to be a regular election, not an off election. If we can't have that, ele if we can't have it by April 7 of 2015, which isn't likely, then the next regular election date is not until February 16th of 2016, a whole year out. So it seems like doing this a whole year ahead of when we would actually have another <coughs> referendum question is very premature. But if we can get this work all done, not engage them until we're ready. That would be, that would be fine. So, um, you and Lynn might agree on that, but you know, when we get the community involvement, they might have a different suggestion on on that, um, dependent on, on when we bring this to referendum. Oh, I agree with Lynn, though. Well, and 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 that 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 certainly um, uh, it's certainly up to you to do that. But I, but I think that you know, with community involvement. There might be a different uh, suggestion that comes from the community, right? Um, I, that, and, and I've seen that even put in the surveys. Again, right. um, we may this public group may come out with an option, whatever that option might be, um, and we've heard lots of them. And right. We haven't talked about options yet, but that's our next <laughs> thing. And there's <clears throat> lots of options to consider. But if the option that ends up floating to the top that's going to get the majority of the public's support right. is something that will get us space in, say, the fall of, open by the fall of 2018. But in order to do that, we have to have the election in November of 2015. And in the survey, people say they would support an election for that purpose in order to get the, so that the school's not delayed another year. Right. And, and I'm not for an option that the majority of the people want to see us do, then uh, you know I want I would let the public um, decide that have, have have some input you know again to decide that we're not we're going to wait till February if we don't get it done in April it, it just it's November right now right so I think we're just a bit premature in saying that is my only comment on it you know and again and once we get some feedback we'll we'll see what they say. Maybe it's the right thing to do, but um, I just I think we're we just need to be cautious about making those comments this early on. It's my my only okay. thought on that. Anyone else on this uh, architect selection process? Yeah, I guess just a just a thought there. Um, so you know there was a lot of discussion that I've heard in the community around. Uh, from an architect's uh, perspective, you know, do we look at, you know, the existing infrastructure and the buildings that we have? Do we look at, um, you know, it would be the, the potential new building that we would have. So there's a couple of different tracks to look at here. 
is this a, a, a single entity that we would select? You know, is there maybe one that would be looking at that might have more experience in uh, new buildings versus one that would have more experience in potentially looking at existing infrastructure and making uh, changes or enhancements there? Uh, you know, I guess I'm, I don't know. I'm just curious to get some thoughts um, because those would be some activities I would think that maybe could be done you know, Sandy said earlier on, start over, right? You could go back to the beginning. Some of that, while we've had work done in the past that, that has given us information on, um, you know, doing some enhancements and refurbishments to our existing infrastructure, it seems like a hurdle that we need to get over regardless, you know? Um, so I'm just want to have some discussion around that. Is that one uh, company that we select for that or is there, is that a, two-track process. I'm just curious. Well, I'm going to defer to the uh, more experienced board members it's because... It's typically been a two-track process and there's an initial uh, initial hire for this, pre -ref, uh, this pre-referendum services, but that doesn't, that doesn't, re that doesn't uh, qualify them or necessarily for the, the construction phase of it. So that's how we've done it in the past. And I, I would think we'd probably want to do it the same way because the question around uh, refurbishing or re, you know building on existing versus new uh, may not be known until that later date in which you want to make that decision. Well, by two track, did you mean um, new construction versus remodeling? Yeah. I mean, yeah, and hiring two different art, uh, firms that one might specialize in one and the other specialize in the other. I'm just curious if it's uh, you know if it's something we need to consider or if if we just have one firm but we're looking at alternatives that brings in you know the different perspectives and in those individuals out there. Well, as far as answer your second question first, I think that we do want to um, have that flexibility. I think yeah. we want to have somebody who is qualified in both, because I think it would get uh, too cumbersome to have two. two different people to be consulting with. Um, but I think flexibility. I mean, we talk about criteria for the selection of the um, superintendent search. Maybe this is the criteria for selection of an architect is making sure that we have somebody who has the flexibility, somebody who comes in with no preconceived notions of we're going to build a new building or we're going to remodel, you know, just have an open mind and willing to work with, um, you know, the questions that are asked. However, I think that they shouldn't necessarily be starting over from scratch because our district has spent thousands of taxpayer dollars and we have a work product from previous architects that we could supply. And that's why getting, you know, a, a an architect in here, that's what we're paying for is their creativity, but they can also build on things that have already been paid for. I agree. So oftentimes the main architect um, engages other consultants that have specific um, experience in various things depending upon the project. So um, we might go down the, the road and decide that, you know, this remodeling is going to be done over here, this addition, whatever, and it would be likely that they could engage somebody else as well with our support. Would, would they then go through the process if you were to have some uh, outside firms come in with some, you know, creative concepts to, to look at our existing infrastructure? What I do you mean? mean? It, well, I mean, it, would they then take that process forward and go get, you know, bids from companies um, that may do remodeling or something like that? Sure. A lot of these firms do do new construction and uh, remodeling. So you can, you can, you know, narrow your criteria down and say, when you come in for an interview or when you, when you submit your materials, show us both. Show us you know, examples of where you've done extensive remodeling to a building and new construction. So you can address it that way as well. Okay, so that was just the, the timeline, but we also need to discuss the scope, of, how will the scope of work be determined and who's going to be responsible for each action? I guess the, uh, first of all, we have to define who the membership of the selection committee, um, you know, is. Do, does the rest of the board, are they fine with the facilities and grounds working with Tim to get these requests for proposals and helping um, 
you know, winnow the list, I'm sure there's going to be dozen or dozens of architects that want to uh, be retained for this, but somebody's got to narrow that list. I mean, how, how do we do that? I'm comfortable with facilities and grounds handling that. Well, I just think I just think we just need to schedule a facilities and grounds meeting every week for the next six months. That's you and you and me. <laughs> so just thinking about that and what you've already, um, the direction you've already given us and the timeline that we have in front of us, knowing that the committee meetings that are going to be coming up on December 1st are going to be long uh, because they're going to be interviewing sure. various um, companies. Uh, another suggestion might be to put this into finance to uh, kind of share the wealth. <laughs> and then Bruce could be engaged there too. Go. There you go, Bruce. <laughs> I'm, I'm fine with that because certainly finance is implicated anyway when we, um, you know, ultimately make a choice and, you know, talk about negotiating a contract. So it's a good suggestion. We can do that. I think I'll just bring my blankie and stay overnight. <laughs> mm -hmm. So. Anyone else, you know, or finance would be specifically Bruce, Lynn, Lynn. your chair, Myself. and Brian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My only question is on the interview process. Would that same group be performing the interviews? Because I'm at the state convention that week. So I'm talking about specifically interview selected firms, select finalists, perform reference checks. I think we got an 11-day time period, and we'd be down in Milwaukee three of those days, so maybe we okay. would try to schedule things around, around that. I okay. might be able to pinch hit there, too, now. My schedule's changed a bit, so. Okay. You're saying you could be the de delegate designee? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> to Brian and Bruce, make sure you know, you'll be in town the week of the 19th through the end of the month or whatever for interviews. So you're not? Well. And I'll be ready to substitute or appoint a substitute okay. if we need that. So you around in December at all? Pretty much done. Okay. Well, we'll I'll get that figured out. I'll be here the week of January nineteenth, the whole week. Okay. okay. December. A uh, December nineteenth? Yeah. I thought she was no, talking no, about the January. it says January. Interview selected interview firms. Interview selected firms. Select finalist. Oh yeah. I'll I think she's talking about January. January nineteenth, Brian. Make it work. I'll, I'll be here that whole week. Or the like week after that. So Why don't we'll we just firm them. up some dates yep. and then we'll check with finance and then go from there? Does that make okay. sense? Makes sense. And I can substitute in finance if I have to because I'll be here that whole week of the January 19th. Okay. All right. Okay. Anything else more on this? Uh, so the membership of the selection committee will start with the presumption for finance since we've got to give them something to do. And... Uh, Financing or facilities and grounds has enough, um, but with you know, with uh, depending on who's available and what, we'll we'll make that work. As far as the scope of the work, uh, be determined. I mean, I guess until we have our consultant in place about the community engagement, I want to kind of leave that maybe question open. Or sh or do we need to give put some meat on those bones now because of the request for proposal? Well, I th think it might be best for finance to review the scope of the work from the last time and make modifications to that, but also make it flexible um, to adjust to whatever comes out of the community engagement process. Okay. Okay. And well, we'll next we'll, on our... Well, we've been given all those options that we had previously, right? I mean, before it was whittled down. I mean, that's what you're... Are you referring to that at all here? Or? I haven't announced the next section yet. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Just, the just process for consideration of potential options. <laughs> all right. So is that, yeah, you were just reading my mind, right, Bruce? That's right. Uh, um, so this process for consideration of potential options, um, we have to, you know, decide what is going to be this process. Um, obviously, again, the consultant's going to get into it. Our the options to be considered by the public participation group going to be uh, spoon-fed by the board? Or are they going to be uh, complete blank slate or some kind of uh, mixture where previous work products of previous boards? Um, you all have seen in your materials received in the last week um, 
a previous board, I wasn't on the board at the time, that looked at about 12 options. Um, that's something that could be forwarded on. I, I'm kind of in favor of using the work product that you've already had, but not necessarily stifling uh, creativity. If there's some, an option that is a variant off of one of those previously considered options, <coughs> great. Um, but I don't think we want to just say that we're starting over completely at square one. Um, it took us years and years to get the, the list to where it was from yeah. 2004 task force to uh, 2012. But What I meant when I talked about starting over at square one was this. If you go back to the beginning and say, okay, we have a high school building. What are the problems with that building? List them and then list options or ideas for how to resolve those problems. I didn't mean go back to square one and, and review 20 or 30 other things. Um, we have a middle school building. What are the problems that we're having at the middle school building? We need more room. Uh, how do we resolve that? Here's a list of options to resolve that rather than coming at it from a, the idea of this is what we proposed and they didn't go for it, let's back that off and see what they will go for. Let's start here at the beginning. Not the beginning of all the options, but let's identify what our problems are with these two buildings. There might be some very easy ways to fix some of these things, at least temporarily. Um, you know, maybe we could go to an open campus for lunch or something because we were having such a problem with the halls at lunchtime. Uh, maybe we could go back to a seven-minute pass time. Uh, things to resolve the problems while we're going through this process, which I think is going to be another lengthy process, it isn't going to happen overnight. In the meantime, we still have the problems at the buildings. Okay, so that's well, what I was thinking. That okay, well, let's let's yeah, we need to distinguish that. I think there's a difference between the short-term plan right. that you're talking about, past times and having open campus. Those are things that have been on the board before and will be again reviewed, um, you know, by facilities and grounds probably <laughs> uh, before years end. Okay. But uh, that's not that sh short-term solutions should not be what's going on the referendum and should not be what we open, you know, where we get this started. We're, we're looking at a long-term solution. That's what we want the purpose of the committee to be looking at. But I think that we do need to. I, I totally agree that we need to look at short-term options and we also need to look at the panoply of the or spectrum of costs mm -hmm. as well. Is how, can, how much will it cost and what could be done to address it? But it kind of goes back to the, how do you determine what the criteria will be used you know, for developing these options? And having reviewed this information again, because the criteria was established before Bruce and I were on the board, certainly before Carrie was on the board, but that criteria came out of the task force from 2004, I think, and um, was developed thereafter as well. I, th I think the criteria itself is absolutely fine. I mean, these are the things that we want to do. One of the criteria is, you know, best use of current facilities. And I think that we shouldn't be changing uh, that criteria. Maybe there's additional criteria, or maybe we tweak some things, but ultimately, uh, I mean, the committee, this public participation group, has to start somewhere and have some criteria. And I think that the criteria that we've had in the past uh, has been useful. It's just, um, is there anything more that can be improved upon that, I guess? The criteria itself? Yeah. Um, well, I, I think that uh, we've, we've got a lot of great info. So to, to not use it would be foolish. Um, I think we need to make sure that we're at least bringing it all forward and we'll make a decision on what, what we're going to utilize, what the community uh, involvement team wants to utilize, et cetera. But I, you know, I just think that um, in addition to looking at our problems, we need to look at what we're trying to accomplish here as well for the next many years and, and what that learning environment um, needs to be. So while, while we're looking at options to fix problems, we are also looking at um, how do we uh, get the best education for our kids here in this community. So that needs to be part of that um, discussion and criteria as well um, to create that type of environment. So 
But I think we absolutely have a lot of great information that we pull from. You know, I mean, there's a lot of good work that's been done. Um, you know, I know that there were whatever the total was, 26 options before 28 or be, be again before you and I got on Jamie. You know, that's information that the community involvement team will have at their disposal. Um, we bring it all forward and, and you know, that's where we'll some work will get done to start to, to get to alternatives. But, you know, I've, I've heard pretty clearly in the community that there's a lot of questions around uh, remodeling in, in our existing infrastructure and in schools. So, you know, I'm very supportive to, to get work done there and, um, you know, start to answer some of the questions that people have and start to show uh, what some of the costs might be for us to bring that forward. So, you know, again, I think that there's multiple tracks that can be moving forward at the same time. Um, you know, when and what time that track starts, I, I guess we got a timeline up there. But I think that that um, is definitely needs to be part of the options that we're exploring. I think the criteria are pretty solid, but uh, that might be one that might be one area that uh, we want to open up more community engagement that could be validated uh, by the community. So, yeah. I think a big part of this, and you know, every time Sandy, you you mention you know. Uh, lunch times and passing times, you really minimize what's really going on in our schools. We should do uh, tours, look at our computer labs, look at how archaic they are in terms of basically their big closets. Who, who wants to take computer science class in a big closet? Or look at our, uh, our labs where we're putting, having students put the labs away at night or sharing a lab with three other teams. That's what we need to do in the district. I'm not concerned around lunch times or passing times and Santa, you mentioned that every time we talk about this. This is about education and let's, let's have this um, committee group go through our schools and look at it. Look at how we're, right now, we're, t we're trying to be a school district of excellence and look at the current facilities and hopefully that will help maybe spark a, kind of a next step and it's not a, you know, how, how big is a lunch room or, you know, hallway space. This is about you know the facilities we have for education. So. I think this is another area to, to kind of piggyback on that in terms of getting the community involved and getting community engagement and ownership around that needs to answer the question: uh, Do do we do we have a space issue? Do we have a long-term space issue? And uh, we, we might assume that, but uh, uh, I think that we need to. I think the community and then maybe this representative group needs to make that determination, do we actually have a, a space, a long-term space issue? And if we do, then let's move forward to the long-term solution. Uh, and let's put to rest this, this, uh, these, uh, these ideas of uh, open enrollment that seems to be uh, presented as a long-term solution uh, and other things like that. So, you know, I, I just think we need to, we're gonna access or we're gonna use the community for engagement and involvement, let's answer that question and let's be resolved about that. And then let's move forward with long-term solutions. May I? Uh, yes. Well, Brian is wrong about one thing. This is the first time I've ever talked about open lunch, uh, open campus. No, you're wrong, because this is the first time anyone's ever mentioned it to me. I have talked about um, the other things that could happen, um, you know, the seven-minute pastime, other things that we could do. And those things I bring up a lot because I see the problem now in the building. We need to do something now while we are planning for this long-term thing. We need to do something to resolve some of those issues now, so that's why I bring it up. But the open and open campus, I've never, I never even thought about that until about two weeks ago when someone asked me about why don't you just go to open campus, and I thought, well, okay, I'll mention it. That's, that's something that could work. Um, I'm just looking for solutions that will give these kids more space or more time or more, more room now while we're trying to figure out what we're going to do that the community will accept. Bruce? We will, I mean, to your point, we're going to have a different conversation on short-term planning, right? Right. I mean, this is the, these discussions are for long-term 
um, options and for community involvement and how we're going to be looking at education going right. forward. Well, this is what we're going to be looking at with the consultant is what's going to be the charge for this public participation group. Okay. And I think that what we're building here is a consensus. Is it going to be long-term solution? And that's what I thought the whole purpose was. That's what the purpose of the referendum was, was a long-term solution. But in the short term, yes, that's a separate okay. discussion. And I think that we will be having good, uh, good, those items. Good points. Need to talk about them. No question. Um, can I ask Mary something? Mary, the the list of options that I was able to find, that one that had the 16 on it that I emailed to all the board members here last week, I think I emailed it, or you got it too. Um, there was another one that we looked at oh, before that. We, before we whittled it down to that, I think there were 16. There was one that we had that had 25 or 30 options on it. Do, do you know if you can get your hands on that, or maybe Tim can? Um, I, I don't even remember right. which. Task force, the task force was, list. I don't think it came from the task force. I think it was something that we what, just compiled a whole bunch of ideas into one list, and it was 20 to 25 ideas. So and I, think I couldn't that, find that in the. Was that in 2012, or? I think it was. I, I remember was, yeah. sitting in the back of this yes. room uh, before I was on the board, and up we here there off. was and there wasn't numbers; they were letters, and it was A through right. uh, okay. W or something. And it was almost the entire alphabet. They and were 15. There was a vote by the members, some of the members of this board that said A or an A, and then at the end there was, I think, five or six that were left. Right. We do that, have that list. We can get that list to you. That'd be great if you could. I looked for it. I, I, I was looking in the wrong spot, I think, because I couldn't find it. That's so, no fault of yours. It's probably because I was looking in the wrong spot. And we'll get that out. All right. Great. So just um, to Thank clarify you. about short-term space, because we were going to report to the facilities and grounds committee, but we have work being done at the middle school and at the high school right now, and we will be having meetings in the next couple weeks to talk about short-term solutions, short-term between now and a referendum, and then beyond the referendum as well. All right. Thank you. All right. Is, so other than that, I guess the one other thing that would be to discuss when it comes to these options, so whether we back up to six options or 12 options or the 23 options or whatever, um, then who decides, you know, how that gets narrowed? I, I'm assuming that uh, we got to give some parameters. Maybe this is where the consultant comes in, tells us how. Mm -hmm. And the consultant will tell us um, what that process. But I think it's going to be important that it's public, you know, kind of driven. Um, whoever is making up this steering committee, if you will, um, it's kind of how I envision it more than, say, a task force, but more of a steering committee where ideas get discussed and then eventually um, ideas get selected and winnowed and and then something is done with a survey so you get even more general participation before we ultimately pick one to put on a referendum. I agree. Okay. Anybody else have a different idea? No, I agree with that. Okay. So we've got our uh, next steps. Just to recap, who's taking good notes there? We've got uh, <laughs> board Sam, committee Sam assignments. Was. I know we've got plenty of work to go around, but we have... Uh, personnel is going to be uh, working on the superintendent search process mm -hmm. and selecting um, a consultant or making a recommendation, hopefully, um, that we can then approve at December 9th meeting. And then the facilities and ground will be talking to community engagement consultants and making recommendations and uh, ultimately um, setting up a process that we'll report on at our December 9th meeting. And then finance we'll be working with Tim uh, to get the uh, pre-referendum architect selection process going so that ultimately uh, the board as a whole would be making a decision by February 10th. Did I miss any of those? Okay. On the survey, we're gonna hold off uh, selecting. I mean, they're right now, in, in my view, that there's, there, there's one that's kind of head and shoulders over the others, but I think we can certainly get more and if we run that through a committee. Short term, short term, what's the, 
And then wh which committee would you be reporting to on the short-term solutions? Facilities and grounds. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, down. just fill in the blank, facilities and grounds, all right. All right, any other uh, steps in this reorganization for you know, a referendum plan? We don't have a specific date for a referendum, but I think we're gonna you know, certainly let, allow the process to, to take it where it goes and um, try to work with some due diligence here. Anyone else have any more comments on that? Otherwise, we'll, Bruce? Well, I, I just, you know, we're to see we're moving on to next steps and stuff, but I, I just wanna say I'm really encouraged right now by the community outpouring of information. I mean, there, I've seen more participation and willingness to want to come to a solution that the community can get behind. And I, I was, I, I've said this to a number of people, I'm more encouraged now after we um, had the, the referendum fail um, to, to see people really start to come together a little bit more and want to get behind this. Um, you know, that's really what this community needs. Uh, again, to reiterate, it is a great community. People um, don't underestimate what we have here in this community. It is, is really special. The education that we have in this community for our kids is very special. Um, you know, we owe it to ourselves to, to carry this forward and get this done. Um, and keep the momentum going, um, but you know, very grateful that the community is um, you know starting to come together more uh, and make this happen. Um, the only other comment I guess I want to make is we had this meeting here, right? And we 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 were televising this, and then we're going to break off into our subcommittee meetings, and we're going to have a lot of uh, hearty discussion in those meetings. And I want to make sure that we find ways to keep our discussions. Um, I know they're, they're posted, they're public, people can come to them. Uh, we really rarely, if any, I, c I can think of maybe one or two where we maybe had a couple people show up. Um, now I'm not suggesting we need to have every single one of them here. Uh, work sessions, I certainly would encourage us to, to have them here, Jamie. Um, and I also think that, um, you know, as we have some of these uh, work sessions that are gonna involve some of these um, discussions that we make sure that we get it out to people that, um, you know, can spread the word and, and, and please, you know, can continue to come to these discussions and, um, you know, continue to provide us feedback. So some last comments there. All right. Mr. President, yes, if people have comments based on the meeting that they are either watching um, on television or that they've been here or present for, how do you want them to give the board feedback? Do we have anything well, set up? I was just, I, I've got a, a, it's funny you say that because I have an envelope in my hand of someone who just dropped something off at my office today. It's a three page handwritten letter, you know, with suggestions and questions and um, I, you know, and I'm sure I'm not alone. There's probably going to be other board members that have chimed up, but I think whether that's by email or snail mail or um, I've even fielded telephone calls of people who are willing to help, and that's why I think I can't emphasize that enough. We're, n we're not shutting anyone's uh, voice off. Um, they have uh, ideas and so forth. We want to make sure that those uh, are heard and, and um, but at the same time, that's what this public participation, I think it's really critical that we get that going and that we do it right, and that's why we're using an expert uh, consultant to get it started, so that way it's the most efficient process because uh, these things can tend to get bogged down because about the time that everyone has gone through and spoken once and people are ready to move to the next step, then more people wanna comment still more about the first step. So that's why it is part of um, a process, very important process though, and I. I agree with you, I mean, as, as much as we can make this as transparent as possible. Um, I think we should have a consolidated way, though, to gather that information so it can be disseminated to the rest of the board. I mean, I don't know if we want to look at opening them up, something like the connections email or something. Okay, so. Uh, is this we'll where we put uh, the trailer at the bottom where the, the dot com and.
go ahead and what's what's our website that for the connections? So the connections email, which when messages come in, the email messages, then those get compiled and sent out to all the board members, and you had some of those. So it's connections at hudson.k12.wi.us, and that's right on the front page of the district's website. So I would just suggest that people um, use connections to get that information to all of you because there's another level and certainly you know individuals who want to communicate with you individually but they may not be willing to communicate with the rest of the board or that's not their intent so that gets it to all board members and I think we could make it um, more public by just putting it at the bottom of our agenda each time that people could do that so that would be each, each time we post the agenda that that they could communicate that way to you. Right, because not everyone can attend our meetings in person, right. and we want to be able to provide a forum for them to be able to still have a voice, so. Can I ask? Uh, yes. Would it be possible to have these committee meetings recorded and put up on Channel 15 for these very important issues that we're dealing with right now in the interest of transparency? Um, I have been asked about where people can get minutes of our committee meetings. Well, there really aren't any unless we take action. There's nothing really kept, is there, Mary, unless we actually have an action item? The minutes are the action of that committee, yes. Right, but the, if we don't take an action, the, mi the minutes are the agenda. But if we don't actually have a vote and a second and a, uh, a motion second and a vote, there's really no minutes that are kept because there was no action taken, correct? Correct. Okay. It is just a record of the action. Right. Of okay. That so I'm wondering if we can't have these committee meetings that we're going to be holding now that are on these very important items that the public really wants to be engaged in, if we can't have them recorded and put on Channel 15. Does it cost us anything to have that done? Well, Channel 15 makes that decision whether they're coming to our meetings or not. We can certainly invite them, oh. and then they make that decision as far <laughs> as I know. I thought they just loved us and came. <laughs> <laughs> so we can extend that invitation. I think we should. Um, I think really that the more pr transparent we can be with all of the work that we're doing to try to resolve these issues, I think it will help to engage the public so that they, they don't think that we're just doing all this behind closed doors and whispering. Everything is out in the open. We're talking about all this stuff. Everybody can see what we're saying. And I think that might really help in getting the, the community to, to support what we're trying to do. And just a suggestion. I'm, I'm totally fine with it. All right. I'd like to see their ratings before and after. <laughs> They're going to skyrocket. Yeah. They just know it. Well, we certainly will have a cure for insomnia in, in <laughs> Hudson then on some of these meetings. So, all right. Um, well, with that, unless there's something else uh, that we missed with regard to the reorganization, but we certainly have our work to do at next week's committee meetings, and then a week after that, we'll have our December 9th meeting, and then we're going to know more how frequently this facilities and grounds committee that I chair is going to be meeting, I guess. All right. With that, we're adjourned. Nope. No, we're nope. not. Uh, uh, oh, we have to go back to James. Robert's rules. James. I'd, like to, <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to resume Robert's rules of order. Oh, Second. you better do that. Second. Second. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, now we're back on Robert's rules, and I'll entertain a motion. Mr. President, I'd like yes. to move to adjourn to closed session pursuant to Wisconsin Statute 19.85, parent 1, parent F to consider the, soci the social or personal history of a former employee which, if discussed in public, would be likely to have a substantial adverse effect upon the reputation of the person referred to in such history. Second. Second. Roll call vote. Uh, Bruce, you second, so you go first. Hanson, aye. Whitaker, aye. Robson, aye. Johnson, aye. Bell, aye. Holland, aye. Gerke, aye. Now we are adjourned to closed session. <laughs>